Hi and welcome to another video from Parker Adams Boat Sales. I'm Jonathan Parker. And I'm Andrew Adams. And today we're going to show you this. It is a Fairline Targa 52. Um, it's a 2002 model and we're going to show you all the features and benefits that this boat has to offer today. And it is a monster. It's a really, really lovely boat. Um, great condition throughout and we're looking forward to showing you over the boat. So let's get on with it. Right, we're going to start at the stern of the boat and uh, as you can see um, it's got a nice um, area of bathing platform and with this size of boat it's, sometimes it can be very hard to get on and off these types of boats especially from the side and as you can see there's enough bathing, prime, um, bath, bathing platform sticking out to actually make it nice and easy to step off and on for anybody and also getting on and off the back as you can see is nice and easy. Um, but there's lots of things on the back here. This, we've been looking around this boat and there's so many little storage areas and cubby holes. It's, um, we're going to try and fit it into this video. Um, but we'll just go through some of the basics here. And, um, and straight away we've got a bathing ladder. We've also got our shore power connection. Now you can see there's two. There's one for the main domestic and one, yes, one for the air conditioning system. So this boat also has air conditioning. Um, also in here, there's a big cupboard here and you can actually fit a life raft into here. I'm going to it quickly for you, so it can be very quickly removed, dropped. It's on a lanyard so you don't lose it. And then the life raft can be pulled out and, um, and launched from here. Very easy. And also the trips for your mains are here as well. Um, a nice little easy access. Um, but also, there's a bit of a toy and a gadget here. So we're going to show you the um, the garage. So we're going to open it up here. Okay, and we can see it's a brilliant area and what's in here is a small rig rib with a console and steering and a 20 horsepower outboard which you can see fits in here. Unfortunately this doesn't come with the boat but it just shows you what you can put in here and it is fully inflated as well so there's actually no messing around and if anyone's ever had a roller trailer this works in very much the same way. Um, we basically lift out rollers and we've got two more sets of rollers that go into place and then we can start to pull the boat out and it will come out on the rollers and then tilt and launch into the sea from here. And recovery is the same. Um, I'm assuming there's some sort of winch system in the front of the boat, um, just at the front of the boat here to haul the boat back in again. But as you can see, it's very easy to set up. And there are lights in here as well. I'll just show you it going back together. And again, it tilts up, so very easy system to put into place and then very quick if you want to to lower down and the garage closes nice and softly I'd also like to show you very quickly actually the, um, the walk arounds on here because they're quite interesting. Because obviously you can see you can't walk around the boat this side but it's very simple, step up and walk around. Even with the covers on, you can very easily get around this boat and we can do the same this side as well. The nice wide walkways and very easy access. So again, you feel quite safe. And even there's grab rails here and there's grab rails on the arch as well. There's also a little cubby hole here, and um, this has got a transom shower built in there, hot and cold water, um, a very nice addition. And there's also a small gate that we can put across so we don't fall out the back of the boat. So stepping onto the Targa 52, you can see it's a very nice entrance onto the boat. And either side of me, there's actually two lounges. Um, there's a double one there and then a single one here. And you can imagine with the covers down, looking out to sea, it's a beautiful place to be. Uh, but the reason I'm showing you this is not only to show you the sun lounges, but also to show you the engine access. 
Um, it's kind of more my domain as I'm an engineer. So I'm just going to show you that the engine access is actually under here. And then there's a ladder here and we can head down into there. Um, which I'm going to do in a sec. But also I want to show you there's actually another storage area under here which is about a foot and a half deep for quite tall bottles can fit there. And also there's another storage area under here. And again, it's about the same depth or bottle height, but you can store um, more bits and pieces in there as well. And um, it's just full of storage this boat. But I'm gonna head down here now. So I'll see you down here in a sec. Right, here we are in the engine bay. And um, what you can see is actually, I'm almost standing up and I'm six foot tall. And I can almost stand up in this engine room. And engine room space is really important when you want to keep a good close eye on your engines. And these are two D12 715s. So the 715 horsepower. And um, these are actually um, derived from trucks. And there's a lot of trucks still on the road now. And these engines are still used today. So even though this is a 2002 boat, these engines are still going now. Now they've changed the electronics on them over the years, but they, they still look exactly the same to me. And I've got a few customers that have got these engines and um, I've worked on these regularly. And they're actually very easy engines to work on. They're, very, they're quite simple in, their, um, in the design of changing, fuel, um, changing oil filters, changing fuel filters, and um, even changing oil. To the point like the dipsticks are centered, the pre-filters are easy access to get at. The oil filters are on the side and high up and they're not low down on the side of the block. The fuel filter is fitted here with primers on top and it just makes life so much easier. And in fact, these in some ways are easier to service than some smaller motorboat engines just because of ease of access. And, um, and I really um, enjoy working on these types of engines. And um, also the, these are very um, uh, reliable and the longevity that you get out of them um, because they're designed for trucks they're designed to do tens of thousands of hours. And of course, if you're a boat owner, you're lucky if you do 50 hours, maybe um, 100 hours a year. And, um, and again, if we're thinking about a 2002 boat, um, that's 18 years, that's only 1,800 hours, you know, if you're doing 100 um, hours a year. And um, that's really nothing on these engines. Um, so, um, so it's really a good, engine access that we look for and I really like these D12 engines. Okay right now you can see I'm on top of the engine um, but I'm just showing you the fuel tank so they're 910 litres I've just checked it says it on the side and, um, and one thing about fuel tanks again it's actually access to them when you want to work on them and on my engineering days there's so many boats where you've just got the floor directly on top of the fuel tank and you just can't access anything even simple things like getting at um, the shutoff cox or taking the um, um, the fuel senders out but on here very easy to get at and very easy to work on um, there's also a huge fire extinguisher on top of here and um, it has actually in date till 2029 and it's a um, and it's one that you can um, it, it's an automatically um, goes off but also you can trigger it with a pull handle up at the helm as well um, so again this is a very easy engine bay to work on but really this is only half of it behind the camera there's actually another half of this um, engine bay which I'm going to show you now right and here we are now in the back of the engine room the engines are just the other side of the camera there and I'm now pointing towards the back and it's actually about the same length again um, from the to the front of the engine room as it is now to the back. And uh, I don't think the camera may be doing it justice, but the light you can see is actually lit up the back of the engine room. And, um, and there is actually access to the rudders and the autopilot, um, the um, trim tab motors behind there. But also what you can see here, um, this is the generator. So yes, this has a generator and it's a 13 and a half kilowatt 
generator, a very powerful one indeed. And I'm sure that has something to do with running the air conditioning system because the air conditioning, as we saw, runs its own mains cable. So indeed, to be able to run the air conditioning on this boat when we're not on shore power, um, a 13 and a half kilowatt generator is required not only to do the air conditioning but the other domestic things as well and uh, so we can be rest assured this Onan 13 and a half kilowatt generator um, will provide all the, the mains power that we require now also on the other side of the engine room this actually spits again over there and I would actually show you more over there but in fact the owners actually even put a tumble dryer down here to use which, which amazes me there's so much room down there and he uses that air side as a bit of storage but what is over there is the hot water tank um, access to the exhaust system on the port engine a similar access to the exhaust system on the starboard engine here um, but also on the back wall here are your electric panels so we've got a 24 volt heavy duty panel with the trip fuses on and we've got a 240 um, gem pack box here as well as the battery charger and controllers for the engine room fans. So it's also it's quite a lot of access here. Um, and it is easy to get around, but what I will say, again, this is a very generous space um, for this sort of size of vessel. And I've been on a lot bigger boats where even the engine room space isn't as tall as what it is in here. So I'm very impressed with it. Right, the, the, just the last thing I want to show is just a, another example of um, how they made this, um, these engines easy to work on. Now I showed you the oil filters and the fuel filters which are over there on the port engine. Um, but of course on the starboard engine they would be on the starboard side of the engine but was it, w would it not be for a bit of forethought? And what they've done, they've moved the oil filters, which are the two main oil filters for the engine and the oil bypass filter, and the fuel filter actually to the rear of the starboard engine so there's no struggling by reaching over and being um, undoing the filters which I've actually had to do in a lot of occasions on boats and really that's where mistakes can be made because you're leaning over the engine you're upside down it's very awkward um, you can be forgiven for um, maybe not paying it as close as attention as you could do if you were here so not only is it make, makes life easier for servicing it also helps guarantee um, minimal mistakes are made so again very clever idea so up here at the helm again everything is to hand with the engine start keys just in front of me here and um, the steering wheel can be adjusted so if we were standing we can steer quite happily standing up um, if we want the bolster up we can stand back and drive as well um, or we can sit on the bolster for slightly elevated view so you can see just over the top of the windscreen and we can drop the steering wheel to there or we can have full through windscreen view and again we can drop it to here so it's actually a, makes it a very comfortable position and there's actually a bit of teak fitted onto the panel here to actually have your feet up and actually I've just done this for the first time and it's a very comfortable position to be in. Engine controls are to hand and these are the Volvo EDC controls which go with the D12 engine so they're electronic so there's no mechanical cables here and um, very easy to operate with one finger. Um, the trim tab controls are just below um, and with the EDC controls comes this EDC soft pad where you can choose to put the engines into neutral if you just want to warm them up um, or and also it'll give you warnings on there if there's any faults with the EDC controls and a little light will flash next to the diagnostic lights depending on what side of the engine. Right and also um, this, um, this boat is fitted with a bow thruster now it has the normal manual controls up here um, but of course if we're mooring up single-handed or short-handed and people don't really know what they're doing on the boat um, you may want to choose to tie up on your own so of course you'll have to leave the helm seat and as I would normally do I'd normally get off the boat with a stern line and put the stern line on but of course you then run the risk of the bow line creeping out but this has a remote control um, so this you can take with you and you can pop on your stern line and then just keep the bow on the pontoon you can walk up alongside the boat grab your bow line and tie it on no fuss um, a nice addition this is uh, right and also um, we've got um, an autopilot a GPS um, we do have a radar as well 
and um, the GPS as you can see is probably the original one um, but it's still a nice bright big screen on here and um, the autopilot as well it looks fairly original to me but again it is all functioning and seems to be working correctly um, but it has had a couple of upgrades um, one would be the um, the VHF it's now DSC with GPS built in Okay. And this has also been fitted with a fusion head unit. <laughs> and the fusion head unit is a good addition. Um, it has built-in Bluetooth, so really brings the boat into the 21st century, where maybe some of the other ancillaries could do um, with upgrading at some stage, but they are functioning well, so there's no need for that at the moment. Um, but the Bluetooth stereo um, also has um, new speakers in the radar arch, and also it has a sub. Um, and the sub is actually just fitted under here. So it's a really good updated sound system, a nice addition to the boat. And right, so here we are up at the bow of the boat. And um, I just want to show you the, um, the anchor locker. So the anchor locker is, it's got quite good access. And we can lift it up, all the full chain is under here. Um, and we've got very handy emergency release handle if need be so we can let the anchor go if the electrics don't work because don't forget this is an electric anchor as well and we have two foot pedals here so we can operate it up and down like so um, also we can operate it at the helm position as well one and of the things that struck me on the bow of this boat is just how much space there is and in fact you've got this sunbathing cushion here that could comfortably have four people um, sitting down enjoying the sunshine on a lovely summer day you're right over there. Sorry. <laughs> so loads and loads of space. Just behind, we'll show you in a second, there's also on the bow, there's actually storage for fenders and ropes. So instead of having to walk all the way back to the cockpit area with the fenders and ropes, you've got some storage lockers on the bow as well. And we'll show you those in a second. Right, I just wanted to show you the walk around. So the walk around again is, like I was saying earlier, is quite wide. So easily walk around. We've got nice um, grab handles all the way through. Um, but also, um, when we are doing our fenders, um, obviously, like Andrew just said, walking them around is going to be a pain because it's quite a long way. It's about 25 foot because it's a 52 foot boat. So we don't want to be doing that. So we can actually hide them away in there like that. And then there's two, there's room for two that side and two that side. So the front two on the on there and the two over there we can get rid of and then we only have to worry about the ones going to the stern. Uh, a nice feature, neatly hidden away. Better than the baskets that you see because they not only impede your visibility as well, it's nice to get them stowed away. So I'm sat here at one of the seating areas on this Targa 52 and I have to say there is just so much space around me. Um, you've got easily enough space here to get about eight people around for a meal here. There's another seating area on this side for another couple of people and then there's another L-shaped seating up here next door to the helm position. So there is a lot of space as you would imagine. Now one of my friends has got a Targa 47 and we, you can really tell actually how much bigger this boat is than one of those just from the sheer cockpit size. It's made a massive difference just that five foot. Right, so here we are by the cockpit griddle. So you can see here you've got a really nice barbecue set up, you've got a sink next door to it, and loads and loads of space around. And it's a perfect environment here to serve your guests who might be sprawled out on the sunbathing cushions. You've also got blue LED courtesy lights that run throughout the boat here. And then this table over here drops down and can create a sunbed area here, which would actually make a really large area. So perfect as an extra large sunbed where you have multiple groups of people enjoying the sunshine. Or if you had loads of people on board overnight, you could drop it down and there's another double bed there. Uh, thanks Andrew for that. And as you can see up the front of the cockpit area, we've got a lovely curved seating area as well. So there's so much seating on this boat. Um, it's really good. So you can actually have two more um, forward facing seats as well as the double helm. So we not only have a double helm, we can have two more forward facing seats here. Um, so going along, it's actually quite pleasurable if you're just with um, just a small group. We can all stick together. I also particularly like all the windows. So these big windows on the side um, really don't block too much visibility. 
um, there's so many boats that we can go on and um, especially if you're at the helm um, the pillars do block visibility but um, but on here you've got the vast windows without them being broken and it gives you really good visibility it's a really good um, design feature uh, also there is a bit more storage we've got some cup holders here and we've actually got a first aid kit in here but anything can be stored in here um, and this is actually a window so it's a roof light basically for one of the cabins down below and talking about the cabins down below I think we're going to head down there and start showing you the interior of the boat. So looking through the documentation on this Targa 52 it's really nice to see nice comprehensive um, pack here we've got the original owner's manual here which runs through all of the specifications on the boat and then also when looking through the bill of sales it's really nice to see that this boat has actually only changed hands twice since it was new. So the original owner bought this boat from BA Peters down in Chichester um, in 2002 and it didn't actually change hands then until 2017 when the current owner bought her. So it's really nice to track back and of course within this paperwork we have the all important VAT certificate. So proof that VAT is paid on this boat. Yeah, thank you Andrew. And, um, and the Targa 52, um, the beauty of um, it only being a two owner boat is that a lot of paperwork kind of can get lost yeah. when, as the boat changes hands over the years. And um, because it's only a two owner boat, very little of anything has been lost over the years. So you get a full pack of all the history of the boat. And, um, and even down to the original owner's manual, which is not terribly unusual um, to be lost over the years, but it's really nice to have it and it's really nice for it to be in such good condition. And, um, and using this we can actually tell you um, a little bit more about the boat. Now um, if I could find the page that I was just on, which was really handy, um, I can tell you about the actual sizes. So this is a Targa 52, um, but it's actually 51 foot 7 and a quarter inches long or the 15.73 meters long. Um, if you take into account the actual um, bow rail, it actually adds a little bit more to it. So if someone wants to come with a tape measure from the bow rail to the back, which some marinas can be a bit anal about, if we can say that, um, it's right, actually right, so. 53 foot two and three eighths of an inch, so you can be very precise indeed, and that's 16.21 meters long. Um, so depending on the marina, you can either get um, a berth under 16 meters or a berth over 16 meters. Um, but one thing about this, even though it's a 52 foot boat, it still only draws 1.09 meters, which is actually a very shallow draft for this size of boat. Um, and um, it actually, again, it weighs 16,000 kilograms and has a fuel capacity of 1,820 liters a water capacity of 455 litres. Um, it has a holding tank um, with a capacity of 182 litres. Um, and, um, and it's actually rated to carry up to 10 people and it's RCA, RCD category B offshore rated. Do you know anything more about the boat? I don't, but if I carry on reading this owner's manual, I would know more. Oh, but if, there's anything, if there's anything interesting that we find of this, we'll of course add it onto the spec sheets. Right, the other thing I just want to show you quickly is actually just this lovely seating area. But it has a couple of little quirks. One is the table can be extended. So you just pull it down and each side can be extended outwards. And um, not only does it give you a bit more seat and dinner space if you're having guests down below for dinner, but also, like the table upstairs, it can be lowered completely down. And again, this can be made into a further bed if need be. Also, we have a large underfloor storage area, and that's where he keeps his stash of wine and the vacuum cleaner at the moment. And and there's also, above here, there's lots of more storage areas. I've not gone in them, so I'll better check what's in there first. But there's lots of cupboard space all the way along here. And in here, we've got all your system controls. So we can turn the batteries on and off from here, and we can turn all the individual components systems on and off here. It also tells you your voltages, 
there's a stereo down here as well um, in addition to the fusion head unit in the cockpit area. So here I am in a galley area and this again just shows you the size of the Targa 52. I've not been in a, a Targa sports boat before where you've actually got a wraparound galley and it's really nice because there's so much here that you can store everything. So you've got a convection and double grill oven here, you've got twin electric hob here and then you've got a double sink here. You've obviously got lots and lots of space here, so I'd imagine it would be nice to have a nice coffee maker there. Loads and loads of space. And then here, what you have is a full-size fridge. And it's really, really nice. You've actually got a proper fridge freezer here. And it's always surprised me on a boat that, um, from the Targa 47 upwards, that Fairline actually managed to get these double-height fridges in. And it's very different from those small little fridges trying to put everything in. So loads and loads of space here. Something we haven't mentioned yet is that this boat actually has air conditioning and in all of the cabins and also here in the galley area are separate air conditioning controls. So the air conditioning can be controlled in all of those different areas to get different heats in each of the areas. It's a really nice feature. The other thing as well just to mention is the voluminous headroom in this. Now, Unlike Jonathan, I'm not nearly six foot, I'm about five foot ten, but there's a huge amount of space above me here. And in a minute, what I'll do is I'll show you into the cabins. And again, what you do here, because the boat has got so much volume, you actually step down into the cabins and it makes a really, really big size space. So everywhere about this boat is about volume and size. It's really impressive. Right, here we are then. This is just, um, we're just going to demonstrate the showing of the layout. So we've got two separate mid cabins. Yep. Um, they are of equal size, aren't they? They are. And um, as Andrew said, you actually step down into them, two steps down, and there's a massive amount of headroom in here. Um, and the beds themselves, I don't know if you can see me, oddly. Um, again, I'm six foot tall, and they're both a good six foot um, plus length here. I think Andrew's going to now show you his cabin. Now, this cabin is pretty much identical. The only difference in this cabin is that there is more headroom. So where you've got the helm seat, which is cut out into that cabin, this one here, you don't have the helm seat, so you've got this high position, lots and lots of headroom here. And this cabin is the one that's got that deck light in it. So Jonathan referred earlier in the cockpit area to the hatch here. That's just directly above here. But of course you do have blinds to pull over against the whole thing if you wanted to. Now both of these rear cabins also have got blue LED mood lighting, which can be switched on if you wished. It's a nice size. You've also got two, in each of the cabins, you've got a high full length wardrobe in here. So lots and lots of storage space as with everywhere else on this boat. And as I said when we talked about the galley area, you also on the control unit here, you've got full access to the air conditioning. So you could, if you wanted to, in this room, make this room really, really cold, whereas some other guests might like the other rooms to be a little bit warmer. So you've got the option there by having the individual air conditioning controls in each of the rooms. And as you can see, I've now gone for the LED lighting finish in my cabin. And as, is, as Andrew said, the wardrobes um, are quite vast. They're full size, aren't they? they are. You can even yeah. get um, dresses in there. If Well, not my, not me. Not, not but, your dresses. Yeah, but not, my, not my dresses. Okay. But they're also lit, and um, which is a very nice addition, because there's nothing worse than trying to find something in the dark. So uh, um, they're actually, that's a nice touch. And we've got a lovely um, large mirror on here as well. So um, if you did have guests, they can actually use the mirror in the morning in privacy. And not to be outdone, just to prove this cabin also has the LED lighting, I can turn that on as well. So both cabins, LED lit. So here I am up in the master cabin and it's a really nice big island bed here. It's really, really nice to see. And when you walk in, you can see the bed actually looks quite small, but it's a full depth bed here. Also, just by the side of the bed here, you've got another one of those air conditioning units. So again, on a hot summer's day, you could make this room very, very cool. You've got a blind that pulls across here. So you've got emergency deck access here if you needed it, or just to get some nice air circulating through, plus two large portholes on either side. Now, what's really nice of this era of Fairline is they started to use these silver brushed 
aluminium blinds which is really really nice and actually that sort of feature is still on current on the boats of today but they started on Fairline about this sort of age so you twist those and it just looks much much smarter than curtains so it's a really nice space to be and of course in this cabin you also have an ensuite which we'll show you now so here we are in the ensuite to the master cabin. Now again, what's really nice about this is you've got a full wraparound shower. So some boats, even of this size, have shower curtains. Not so with this boat. So you've got a proper TARDIS style shower here where you sit in there, put, stand in there even, pull that round and it means that the rest of the room doesn't get soaking wet. So you've got everything drained through into a sump pump at the bottom here and it's a really good size here. So you've got a sink built in molded here, electric toilet and it's a full size toilet. So it's not just looks like a sea toilet, it's a proper full size. You've got mirrors all around, and as Jonathan said, it's not surprising, there's loads more storage in this room as well. Right, well, as Andrew was saying, um, having the full-size um, shower cubicle without a shower curtain is a real benefit. And I'm six foot tall, and this is proper stand-up shower, and really this shower is as big as any other normal shower I would go in of a, of a room of this um, of this size of course you know we do have walking showers and things like that now but really for a shower on board a boat this is vast um, and it's pretty much the same layout as the um, the one in the main cabin um, but again it's um, it's just small touches like the lights that are in here they actually when you open the door they actually light up the cupboard inside so it's just having these small touches and this extra storage even under the sink you've got storage here as well um, and the the, fl the electric flush as well they're very reasonably quiet um, for some electric toilets are very loud indeed but this is actually reasonably quiet in the lovely saloon area um, a lot of more up-to-date boats you would see when you come down below you'll see um, quite a large television on the wall now and in fact there's enough space on here to fit a large um, LED TV and it would be a lovely addition um, but back in 2002 um, 18 years ago now don't forget um, I don't think there was probably a television that would work well in here so what we have instead we have a smaller television fitted here which is actually surprisingly okay sitting around in the saloon area everybody sat around can actually see it um, but as a TV size obviously it could do with updating but perfectly functional and is it actually in quite a good position. Right well that brings you to the end of this tour this walk around tour of this really lovely Fairline Targa 52. I have to say it's a really lovely boat. It's the first time personally that I've been on the Targa 52 and there are so many lovely little touches that make this boat feel not only voluminous in size but also loads and loads of storage spaces and just high quality feel. Having got a Targa 34 myself, I have to say I feel like it could be pretty much hoisted up and put on the back as a tender. Uh, the space on this boat is really fantastic. Yes, this is a vast boat and I'm sure now you can appreciate um, what it has to offer. And to me, this boat feels an awful lot newer mm. than it actually is. Um, and I really enjoy being on here and, and the space is great. And I especially enjoy the engine room because it is kind of my domain. You, you, you like an engine room, don't you? John? I do like an engine room. <laughs> and especially a good access engine room. But everything on this boat is large and easily accessed. And I really like the way Fairline especially have put all the thought into everything they've done to actually make all the areas accessible, but also maximise storage. So it's a boat really not to be missed. Absolutely. So thank you once again for watching this walkthrough video. Um, do like, subscribe to the channel. Uh, we do these on every single boat that we list and we're also really looking forward to taking uh, this boat out in the next few weeks and we're going to be doing one of our drone videos on this as well which will be really a great opportunity to see this boat powering along under those engines um, and yeah, looking forward to doing that and showing you more of the boat in the next coming weeks. But if you'd like to inquire about this pl boat, please do get in touch with us. Inquiries at parker-adams.co.uk. That's inquiries at parker-adams.co.uk. We'll of course put a link to our website and email address under this YouTube video. Thanks for watching. Thank you.